Hey, everybody. Today we have Mel McSherry with us. She is an expert in human design. She's going to be talking about the five different types. She's going to be providing some tips on human design. So if you feel like you're not yourself, if you feel a little lost, you're going to like this episode. She shows her story, how she got into human design, and how she's helping others. One of the things that has helped me is goal setting. I published this book. It's goal setting. It has quarterly goals in it, monthly goals, weekly goals, and daily goals. So you plan out and then you reflect. There's some prompts in there to help reflect. I'm all about planning out and it has helped me to become more organized. If you have any questions, the link is in the show note. Reach out to me and let's get started. Hey, everybody. Today we have Mel McSherry with us talking about human design. So we're all about the power of peacefulness in this podcast. And I'd come across Mel and I was like, human design, this is a fabulous topic to have. Mel, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Sharon. Tell me your story. How did you get into this? How did you become an expert in human design? Well, it was definitely a journey and still is, which I'm sure most can attest to. Uh, But my journey as an entrepreneur started back in 2010. And I was originally in the fitness industry. I was a certified personal trainer. I tried out the corporate world in gyms for about a year and a half, did not like it, and decided to just start my own business. And when I initially started, it really, I was young and it was coming from a space of just wanting to serve, right? Wanting to be able to work who I wanted to work with, the hours that I wanted to work. And it was very pure and very genuine. And as my life, shifted. Um, I got married. I had our first child. I got divorced. That information and that drive unconsciously got shifted, especially when I moved from the fitness industry into the quote-unquote business coaching space. And with that business coaching space came a lot of advice, came a lot of noise. And all of a sudden, my hierarchy of motivation and needs went from mental and emotional then financial to financial first, right? Milestones, make your plan, stick to it, da, da, and the mental and emotional will just follow. And I will admit on paper that did work. I was speaking all over the world. I was making really great money and yet, and doing something that I really loved and yet was feeling disconnected. Every single session was talking myself into, oh my God, is this the day that they figure out that I'm a, like a faker? and trying to maintain this framework that I was so diligently taught to stick to. And fast forward to 2020, I decided to go outside of my normal routine and experience a spiritual retreat in Sedona. And it just happened to have been, it took place two weeks before a lockdown here in Chicago. And here in Chicago, we were in lockdown for a very long time. And I am a primary caregiver to my son who ended up being home for virtual learning. And during that spiritual retreat, I got introduced to human design and I read who I was. I looked at my chart. I had a really amazing friend who walked me through it and I just cried because all of these, all of this angst, all of this stuff that I was fighting so hard against was just actually how I was designed to create what I wanted. And that is why I was constantly feeling I was constantly second guessing. I was constantly overextending myself. I was constantly overwhelming myself. And during that time, I realized it was time for me to stop looking for external support and copy and paste and look and get to know me. And I'd never really done that before. And since doing that and really applying my design and my strategies and my strengths, not only in my business and in my personal life, Everything is just 180. My pace is different every day, though still hard because I'm human and this is a journey. (laughs) Even in those rough times, I now have the foundations to know how to be profitable inside of it. And now when I say profitability, it is always that threefold of mental, emotional, and financial. And ever since then, I have been called to show other entrepreneurs how much they know They have everything inside of their soul to answer the call. They just need to find it. And learning how to see themselves and trust themselves and learn where to make and how to make decisions from those spaces, I think is really going to shift 
the dynamic from being this copy and paste style collective to honoring the individual and strengthening the collective with that. So much there, so much to unpack. <laughs> what a great timing though, right? Like right before COVID that you would have mm. the opportunity to do this retreat. And as you're sitting there talking about it, I'm like, I think everybody could use a retreat like that where we just get to know ourselves. Yeah, agreed. And it's it's not it's not a reward. Like I think we get talked a lot that we can use self-care as a reward or as an afterthought, but it is part of that personalized personal development that should be not only inside of the day-to-day as much as possible, but also just part of your self-evaluation and self-reflection. So, for the women who are out there, that'll listen to be like, I want more of that. Where should they start? Give us some tips as far as human design. So human design is such a beautiful and impactful tool because it is so layered. So if you are curious to actually know what your pure design is, there's many free charts that you can get online. Um, All you need to know is your birth date, time, and location. And it is going to give you a ton of information. But what I would love to provide first is is more of a gateway drug <laughs> to moderate to yourself because you really already work within your design. We just tend to go too far. So I would say first, really honor and set your pace. It's so easy for us to get caught up in the, you hit the milestone, do the next one. You did this, now do that. And getting caught up in more in the, you know, step one, step two, step three format or lifestyle. Instead of going, you know, okay, I got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. I got to respond. I got to respond. I got to respond. Understand what that, how that works for you throughout your day. So for example, email is one of the biggest ones I usually touch on. We get so consumed by it, right? We feel like we have to be in it all the time in order to be available to prove our worth. I challenge my 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 clients and I always kind of offer the suggestion of setting certain times to check your email, right? So when you go in, you only respond to the emails that came in, you shut it down and you don't come back until it's set in your day. Because what that does is it sets the expectation and honors your pace. For me, it's only twice a day, morning and afternoon, right? And it can be different depending on your type of business. But you have so much say on how you spend the time that you have. So set your pace and others will follow. And to match that, also look at your more energetic times of days and how can you protect those? We can't go 24-7. None of us can. There are different energy levels within human design, within the different types. There's five different types. None of us can go 24-7. So when are the times of day that you are the most energetic and protect those with tasks that honor that energy? Don't befuddle it with, you know, meetings or with things that don't honor it. Create quick automizations, Calendly links for certain times of days that only, you know, people have meetings for. There are ways that you can simply protect your time through those really lovely free applications and frameworks. And then I would say the last thing is check in on your energy. I always say when you wake up in the morning, check it on yourself. What is your energy like? Look at the meetings that you have. Does that match the energy that you have? If not, you have full say and you can reschedule. If it's time sensitive, obviously there's other levels. Sit with that. But for the most part, you do have full say. So what tasks on your to-do list match the energy that you have? If it's different than what you expected, that is beautiful. It's okay. It's going to get done. But we really need to stop this vicious cycle of, well, I'm said I'm going to do it. That means I have to do it no matter what. Mm -mm. If you really don't have the time, energy, and capacity to do it, how can you make it to where it either fits with that or what can you do instead so you can free up that energy and put it towards that step when you're ready. Couple of things. You mentioned the five human designs, different mm-hmm. types. Absolutely. So the first one is generator. That is 70% of the population. And a quick info into them. They are the structure. They are the backbone. They are they they are people tend to call them the worker bees. I don't really like that definition because that tends to be too tactical. But you are those energetic beings who just 
can get shit done. <laughs> you have the energy to do it. Um, the next type is actually a subtype of a generator called manifesting generator, which is 35% or half of the generators are what's called manifesting generators. Those are my energetic multitaskers. Those are the creative, inspired individuals who should not and cannot niche down and are meant to be in many spaces, not exactly at once, but are able to bounce around to different spaces and be fully present and be fully profitable inside of them. Next are projectors. Those are 20% of the population. I am a projector. And we are the guides. We are the facilitators. We are the ones that witness everybody else's strengths, everybody else's ideas. And we are the ones that help facilitate so those ideas can be brought to life in their right place. Next is manifestors, which are about 7% of the population. Those are our magicians. That's what I love to call them. They are the initiators. They see it. They can start it. And where they need to stop is when it's been started. <laughs> and then it's they are the ones who are just filled with so many ideas and can really bring that extra zhuzh, that extra insight, that extra magic into spaces. But they're not meant to live there. They are meant to share, to give away, to be involved. And then when they feel like they are done, to bless and release and move on. And then last but not least are reflectors. These are le less than 1% of the population. And the reflectors are the barometers of the collective. They are the mirrors. They are here to reflect and to maintain the energy. And when I talked about pace earlier, reflectors are very interesting because they have a strategy that they need to wait 28 days before making a decision. So being a reflector, being an entrepreneur, that already sounds a little bit you know, like combating heads. But that is such a gorgeous invitation to go, nope, I'm meant to move, quote unquote, slower, differently, because that is how I ensure I am reflecting the right energy. I am receiving the right invitations. Um, so those are just really quick. And each of them, again, do come with a strategy. But those are definitely the, the overarching energetic blueprints of each of those types. Excellent breakdown. Thank you so much for explaining You're that. You're welcome. Especially for those that are listening out there, they want to hear more about it. Yeah. You also mentioned imposter syndrome when you were so busy traveling the world, doing a lot of yeah. talking. For, you know, a lot of people say, oh, getting talking, like speaking gigs and getting paid for it. it's like wonderful, great money. The problem is you're all over the place. And um, yeah. so that's really difficult and it can catch up with you rather quickly Absolutely. and a really very high chance of burnout. So we want to be careful of that. But you did mention imposter syndrome during this. What did you do to help with the imposter syndrome? And for those of you out there, basically imposter syndrome is when you feel like you shouldn't be there. It was an accident. You are where you are, but somebody made a mistake and they put you there. Like maybe you shouldn't be in front of this room of 500 people giving this talk. Talk to us about how you were able to get over imposter syndrome. Well, the biggest piece for me was really, truly understanding who I am. Um, identity for me has been a really huge piece. And there are pieces in human design um, called centers, which are located over your chakras. And I have what's called an open G center, which means my identity is chameleon-like. I can shift and not in a way that is hiding or coding, but more that I constantly evolve and learn. And where I was um, halting myself was by trying to stick to a certain title, a certain identity, and not allowing myself to be more, even though I could feel every fiber of my being wanting to push past it or just expand on it. And so when I understood that part of my design and why that was um, a beautiful part of my design, not necessarily a hindrance. That gave me so much more permission to play in that identity space, as well as when I started honing in my offers and how I work my business to my design, I now have the trust that I'm just in the right spaces and these are the right people. I'm no longer tied to frameworks. I'm no longer tied to solutions necessarily. I connect to a tool that is you and then I'm here to just guide you through that tool. 
And so those reframes of who I am and how I serve really helps that imposter syndrome. It's not gone because, again, still human, but she'd be a lot more quieter (laughs) in the day to day. (laughs) Love that, Mel. For people who are listening out there that want to get a hold of you, how would they do that? So the best way I love to get to know people through complimentary virtual coffees. So please feel free to pop on my link, virtual coffee, uh, virtual coffee with mel.com and schedule a coffee chat. Other ways that you can get to know me. I'm very active on LinkedIn, Mel McSherry, as well as Instagram, mel underscore McSherry. Or you can check out how I serve on melmcsherry.com. Tell us about some of the resources that you have available for those who are listening out there. Absolutely. So I do have a a checklist, a free checklist on my website that helps you energetically get shit done. And it's even, it's 13 steps, but they're more, not a step-by-step. It's more of a checklist. It's more of check-ins for yourself of how can you, what are the small ways, again, that you can slowly but surely honor your time and, you know, have full say on how you spend your time and energy to get things done in the way that you, that feels good to you. Um, I also have several other podcast interviews, um, as well as uh, just a lot of little tips and tricks on how you can stay in alignment with your design, even if you don't know it. Mel, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. Thank you.